Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another unboxing video. Not just any unboxing, the king of all unboxing videos because there is a story behind this parcel. This parcel gave me many a sleepless nights. For those of you that know the story, uh, I made the very foolish decision of trying to buy some perfumes off of my very good friend from across the pond, Rich Mitch. And if you guys don't know, I mean, Rich and I um, are obviously we're like long lost fragrance brothers from another mother, a duck and a ram. Uh, but we're also pretty good friends, I would say. And we talk about all kind of stuff. I mean, we have, I talk to Rich just about every single day, believe it or not. Um, and, you know, we have kind of formed this friendship outside of perfume that obviously perfume kind of fomented, fomented. Um, but, you know, uh, these perfumes that I purchased from him six months ago we tried multiple times to get the fragrances to the states the first time we tried so actually what we did the the real story is we did a trial balloon and the trial balloon was rich sent me some samples and he sent me little decants actually here's a couple of them right here let me just show you he sent me stuff like this which i plan on doing a video on this very soon this is andy towers lonesome rider so he sent me stuff like this about 12 of them 13 of them in a little package and we sent them, he sent them via Royal Mail from the UK, and um, they never arrived. It was like a month, two months goes by, nothing. So we thought, shit, they must have just got confiscated, right? And then lo and behold, all of a sudden, a package arrives in my mailbox out of the blue one day, and it's these fragrances. So we thought, well, shit, the trial balloon worked. Let's send the big perfumes on. Well, of course, the uh, Royal Mail, which was the Majesty's Bastards at the time, now uh, Her Majesty's Bastards, but Her Majesty is no more, uh, and they confiscated them. They confiscated the full bottles, and they were big bottles, they were expensive, um, and they confiscated them, and we were very concerned. Uh, luckily, Rich was able to secure the perfumes back, okay? Uh, and we thought, how are we going to get these to them? We tried everything. Uh, we tried going through friends that had uh, hazardous good licenses. We tried um, going by ship. The ships wanted you to ship like basically a pallet of, of something. You know, you couldn't just ship a box. You needed like a pallet. Um, and we then decided, you know what? It was about four months in, four months of this six-month fiasco. And we decided, you know what? Screw it. Let's try DHL because DHL specializes in international shipping. So we tried DHL, I got an alert on my phone, it said, your package is on the way, and I thought, this is it. Okay, we figured it out. Yes, it was expensive, it was like 100 quid or something. Yes, it was expensive, but damn it, the perfumes are on the way, finally. And Rich gets a call, and the call says, uh, Rich, did uh, you by any chance try to send a perfume, uh, a package full of aftershaves? And he said, yeah, 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 that was me. Do you want to come pick it up? He said, yeah, sure. So um, he went to go pick them up, and they kept the money, of course, the bastards. All they did was move it from, like, one substation to the other 30 miles away and then figured out what it was and uh, declared it unflyable. And uh, so we were stuck again. What in the world do we do with these fragrances that are stuck in England in this uh, perf Nazi perfume state, basically, is what I'm calling England. It's like a black hole of perfume. Perfume can get in, but it cannot get out. And long story short is we tried many avenues, but we finally came up with a winning strategy. A friend who wants to remain nameless, although I owe him a million thank yous, met with Rich. Uh, and he uh, met with Rich and he um, agreed to act as courier, to act as mule, basically, is what he did. And here they are, the long lost fragrances from England. The box is a little bit bigger than it looks, okay? But um, I'm going to unbox these because you have no idea how excited I am. Like, look at my face right now. I could just smile nonstop for the rest of the day. But before I do that, I actually have another unboxing. So to all you people that hate unboxings, well, too bad. Uh, we're doing an unboxing today, and we're going to enjoy it. And if you're a sourpuss and you hate unboxings, well, screw off. Uh, but we're going to unbox these. This is another very famous perfume that I'm so glad I have uh, because this fragrance is a classic, an all-time classic. And actually, 
As a leather lover, it was a little bit of a uh, shame that I did not already have this in my collection, if you will. Uh, he put tape all over the box. All over the box. Okay, let's, let's open it up. Here it is. Um, so the fragrance that we are going to unbox before we get to Rich's long lost fragrances, the haul that took six months to arrive. What a glorious day today is. You guys have no idea. I wish Rich could be here to share this moment with me. Um, but before we dip into Rich's fragrances, I am going to unbox for you this little gem. Queer de Lancôme. And Queer de Lancôme is a discontinued perfume, unfortunately, uh, as seems all the best ones are. Uh, but it says, the left bank a back street in St. Germain, a woman steps inside the luxurious lobby of a Parisian hotel. Her appearance creates a silence and freezes time for a short moment. She embodies those women who possess infinite charm, timeless grace, and unique presence. Her assured step, even the slightest gesture, capture attention and light. Her undeviating stare explores the depths of your soul. Wow. Depths of your soul. Um ethereal, almost unreal, she drifts towards a small marble table where a bouquet of flowers and a, and a note await her. Slowly, she sinks into the velvet arms of a large sofa. Where is this going? <laughs> An eternal moment, sensually, she removes her gloves. Where is this going? Uh, the warm, supple leather slides gently over her fingertips. Where is this going? Around her, the flowery notes of the bouquet seem to hover in the air. The words she reads draw a smile, like, se like a secret light, light lighting up her lips. Her glowing eyes radiate an intriguing light, that of intense passion. She is at this very moment the quintessential woman. Her fulfillment is absolute and unveiled. Okay, they need new writers. But Queer Lancome, in a nutshell. Whoa, buddy, what's up with your cap? You didn't tell me you had a broken cap. You shyster? Maybe that's just how it is, but it doesn't seem to click onto place. Oh, wait, no, no, it doesn't. Um, oh, well, whatever. The fragrance is all I care about. And um, this fragrance is actually supposed to be the reincarnation. So here's the bottle. Sorry about the, I didn't know the cap was wonky. Um, Maybe I'll have to play with this later, but um, long story short is this is a very um, popular, or maybe not popular, but it's a very important fragrance in the history of fragrance. And the reason is, it is supposedly, okay, I say supposedly because um, this is what I've researched and discovered, but I am not 100% sure. But if anyone knows with 100% certainty, uh, do let me know. But this fragrance is supposedly the reincarnation of a very famous perfume called Tabac Blonde by Caron. And so Lancome uh, recreated that fragrance and called it Queer, like Queer de Lancome. Um, and it's supposedly this amazing leather, iris, um, leather, iris, elang, birch tar, styrax, that white hawthorn flower. Um, I can tell you just from sniffing this, I'm going to love it just from the atomizer. And this is getting very hard to find. I got very lucky, even with the shyster cap, the guy didn't tell me about, I still got very lucky. Um, I wonder what's wrong with the cap. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if the collar got stuck in the cap or something is what happened. Anyways, I'll screw with that later. Either way, I'm, gl I'm so glad to have this. So this is the warm-up unboxing. Queer de Lancome. And you know I love my leathers, so this is patchouli, saffron. Mm, it's found a home. Uh, so you're going to live amongst your fellow brethren. Where do you want to live? Uh, you can live right here for now. Till I find a better home for you. Okay, so that brings us to the main event. And the main event is going to be the box from England that 
lived mysteriously in Rich's basement for a long time until our mule came along and rescued the day. Thank you to You Know Who You Are, by the way. And then, to make matters worse, I mean, not worse, but uh, I, uh, I got a message from this mysterious fellow today. And he said, I'm sending you some more samples. I said, oh God, you are way too kind, mate. Seriously. Uh, I did send him something back in return, but um, let's see what we have. I have no, I, this has been so long, I don't even remember what's all in this. So, uh, first of all, let's see what's this. I know he mentioned that he wanted to get this to me as quickly as possible because of how long I've waited and have I ever waited? Okay, a couple samples that Rich Mitch included. One is pure Tonka. Yes, I've been wanting to smell pure Tonka. I want a bottle of this, to be honest with you. And I just can't get it at a fair price because it is discontinued and very hard to find. So uh, pure Tonka's one. Ah, here we go. Yes, that's right. So the original Macassar, Macassar as Rich would say. I always say Macassar, but I think it's Macassar. And um, I have the, uh, I guess you could call it the reimagined version from the year like 2000. Uh, this is the original vintage. And uh, this is holy juice. Yeah, this is holy. It's, it's the Hulk of the leather game. And you guys know I love my leathers. Actually, interestingly enough, um, I wore this to bed a uh, couple nights ago, and it is absolutely glorious, even in this form. So if you guys see this bottle, I think there were some in England. They wouldn't ship to the United States, but I'm so glad I have this. Um, but if you guys see this for $90, $100, bucks, do not worry about the reformulation. I can tell you this is a good fragrance. I can't tell you it's the same fragrance as this yet, but I will do a comparison video one day soon with the original from the... Uh, I think it was early 80s or late 70s and the reform, but this is a good fragrance. I'm telling you right now, um, that stuff is amazing. And then we've got Ultra Zest. Yes, that's right. I have never smelled Ultra Zest. Um, as you can see, I'm on a Terry Mugler kick, discontinued Mugler kick. I am still very upset with the with what Estee Lauder has done. And here's pure wood. So all Terry Muglers, that's what I asked them for. These are the ones I wanted to smell, where talk about. Um, so you've got some discontinued Terry Mugler videos to go through. All right, let's do this. Let's get to this. Let's do the freebie first, because Rich did even throw a freebie in. He learned from uh, Enchante. No, I'm just kidding. But this was one that he... Uh, said just wasn't for him. And he's like, man, do you want this? It's a vintage bottle. Uh, I'll throw it in there with the packaging. And I was like, yeah, go on. Go on then. Um, this is Root de Vetiver by Maitre, Maitre Parfume Agantier. This is what the vintage bottles used to look like. Look at this. How about that? Look how glorious that is. Um, the... Uh, Oh, minty dark vetiver, man. Just from the just from the atomizer, it's supposed to be like this dark vetiver. MPG. Um look how they used to just write it on the bottom of the bottle. Like Creed used to do. It's crazy. Uh my very first Matria Parfume Gantier bottle. Amazing. Thank you, Rich. Let's see what the notes say, just for just for kicks, because I'm curious. Um, let's see. Maitre Root de Vetiver. Root de Vetiver. 1988. Aldehydes, leaf greens, and black currant. No mint. It smells almost minty from the atomizer. Bourbon, vetiver, precious woods, and jasmine. Precious woods. Um, musk and sandalwood. Uh, so, but again, that's more than enough for me to wear, talk about on the channel. Apparently, this is still available for purchase. It's a woody, earthy vetiver. Um, amazing. Thank you, Rich. That was very kind of you. All right, let's get to the big boys. And one of the biggest boys, this is actually the perfume that set this entire thing in motion. The entire thing was set in motion by this. 
So let's open this up and talk about this little bastard. Uh, so there's a there's a story within the story. This is like uh, you know that movie where they go into different layers of dreams. Uh, and so this is the story within the story. And the story within the story is that uh, there's a fragrance I was hunting for a very long time, years. And actually the reason is it's one of the first fragrances that Chris from Scentland ever reviewed on his channel. It might actually be the first, I can't remember, but it's close to the first. It's like the first five fragrances at least he reviewed. And it's called Kinski by Kinski. And as you can see, this is sealed, okay? Uh, and so Kinski by Kinski is a creation by Giza Schoen. And this is made in 2012. This is discontinued. So uh, you're going to see a lot of discontinued perfumes in this haul from Rich Mitch. Uh, and I was like, man, that sounds crazy because it's got cannabis, aldehydes, juniper, blackcurrant, bergamot, nutmeg, rose, magnolia, marine notes, freaking marine notes with cannabis, uh, like drowning and smoking a J all at the same time with castorium, suede, styrax, patchouli, apparently it's a big patchouli note, vetiver, earthy vetiver, benzoin, musk, cedarwood, labdanum, and amber. And I went, holy shit, I have to try it. I have to secure a bottle with the way Chris from Scentland was talking about it and all this. And never mind what you think about Klaus Kinski as a person. He was obviously, uh, you know, somewhat out of his mind and a little bit insane. But uh, the fragrance itself was very intriguing. And so I went to go buy this and I went to go buy it from a German shop and I forget the name. I'm sure Rich can leave it in the comments. But um, the German shop basically said, we'll ship it to you to the United States for like 80 bucks or something or, or $90 or it was like as much as the fragrance. And I was like, shit, you know, now looking back on it, I'm like, wow, what a steal. I wish I would have taken them up on it. Uh, and... But Rich was like, you know what? I have an account with them. They have two Kinskis left and that's it. And we couldn't find this fragrance anywhere. Not on eBay, not on Mercari, not on Etsy, nowhere. None of the people we knew who were into vintages had it. Anuj didn't have it at Enchante. Uh, Mudasir didn't have it. So I was like, screw it, Rich. Go ahead. You get it. You get free shipping and just ship it on to me. Well, you know, it'll cost you 20 bucks to ship to me. Well, that's how this all started because of Kinski. So let's open this bad boy up. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do a early impression. I think I'll just wait. We'll make this an unboxing and I'll do a video on, on, on these very soon. By the way, I, oh, you bastard. Now it's really turning into a Rich Mitch video. Fragalanche. Um, on a side note, I was going to say, my scent of the day is this little gem. From the house of John Varvato is called Dark Rebel. This has been making an appearance a lot on my channel all of a sudden. I wore it to work, and you know what? I enjoyed it to an extent. Uh, it felt a little sweeter today than I remember it. Um, but it, it does have that rum and sugar thing going on, so I knew it was sweet. I just didn't remember how sweet it was. Uh, but it does have a, a nice leathery, styraxy, resinous, you know, interesting dry down. And... Maybe because it warmed up a little bit today. Maybe when it gets colder, really cold, that'll that'll uh, wear a little bit better. But I enjoyed it, but it was like, eh, you know. But finding this package at home makes it all all the better. So, Kinski. So, and then, to make matters worse, when we got the two Kinski bottles, Rich sent me a picture, and they were different on the back. Like, they had different... One marking was, like, over here. It said a couple of different things, and... And that's the exact thing we're into is like specific formulas. And he was like, shit, what do we do? And I was like, I have no clue, man. Just pick one and give me the other one. Uh, so this is the one that I ended up getting. Batch code 178A, if any of you know anything about Kinski batch codes. I think this is the smoky one. Or maybe it's the pineapple one. Uh, this is um, licensed through Kinski Productions. Kinski made in England. Who would have thought? Kinski fragrances. Crazy. Look at this. This is a rare beast indeed. A, a real ram duck special. Uh, let's open you up, shall we? I guess I should learn how to open stuff up where you guys can also see it. But it comes with no cap. This is what the bottle looks like. Kinski on the back and the K on the front. There she is. This is the fragrance that caused us so much headache and trouble. 
Oh, I can tell it's going to be weird. I love it just from sniffing the atomizer. But I think this has, man, I, I think I have to spray this. I don't think I can wait. All right, hang on, everybody. I wasn't ready for this, but it's going to happen. We'll get my Kemi, uh, my Kemi blotter, which I don't own a single Kemi. Oh, that is unbelievably strange. I absolutely love it. Oh, I absolutely love it. It's so weird. It does have a cannabis note. This has the most prominent cannabis note I think I've ever smelled in a fragrance. Um, I don't think I've ever smelled a realistic cannabis note in a fragrance until this. I don't know if... Um, I don't know if you smelled it and you didn't know it was cannabis. If you would go, man, that's cannabis. Or if you would go, it's just some weird green thing in the opening I've never smelled. Because it smells like cannabis and vetiver is what it smells like. I would have guessed vetiver, I think, had I not known cannabis. But that extremely strange aldehydic fresh juniper mixed with the cannabis and that weird black currant note. And there's something very dirty in the reason. Okay, so this is why I love this fragrance right away is it's got castorium. This would have fit perfectly into my castorium video yesterday. Fuck, that's good. Oh, that is a winner. I'm I'm already happy about the haul and forget about all the other amazing stuff that's in there. So Kinski uh, by Kinski. Uh, amazing. Okay, let's keep going. We got a lot of stuff here to unbox. So uh, you might think this is Basile Uomo, but it's not. It's actually a Trojan horse. Basile Uomo is not in this box. Can anyone guess what's in this box? Does anyone have see-through powers? Because it's something absolutely amazing. So Rich's hatred of Shalimar is my gain in this case. Uh, um, Rich does not like Shalimar, and he does not like Le Leon, which is fine. You know, we uh, nobody's perfect. But uh, this is a vintage... Look at this, Coke bottle, Guerlain Shalimar. Just think, this was on one of Rich's unboxings. We now have a fragrance that was unboxed by Rich on his channel once that is now unboxed on mine. Um, oh, oh God, I just want to wear this right now. Um, look at this. Look at the bottom of this. Oh, baby. 97 mils. How quirky is that? But even back then, look, they took the time to put the beautiful Guerlain B. I mean, it's the Eau de Toilette, which I prefer the Eau de Parfum, but you know what? Uh, with vintage form, man, this is what a gem. So thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you for the Shalimar. Okay, let's continue the unboxings. You know what? We did an unboxing of a sealed bottle. Let's do another one. I'm feeling I'm feeling frisky. Uh, now, this is uh, a fragrance that I have a decant on. I've talked about before on my channel, so it shouldn't be anything new, okay? Um, and it is basically... Um, one of my favorite vetiver fragrances of all time. Well, before I open it, I guess I should show you. Uh, it is Nishane's Sultan Vetiver. And we did talk about the fact that there is a very prominent um, uh, amber wood note in the base. And you know what? It doesn't bother me in this fragrance, luckily. I think it bothered Rich a little bit. He... he I think over the years, Rich became very sensitive to amber woods. Uh, and so luckily for me, I am able to tolerate them just a little bit better still. And so, yes, Sultan Vetiver, I am very happy to have a bottle up. Let's open you up. Uh, I have a decant. I've talked about it on the channel. 
But now I've got a full bottle, so that is exciting times. Let's see what you're all about, Nishane Sultan Vetiver. Um, sealed. Oh, just imagine. This was in Rich's cabinets forever. Here, here you go. Hey, Nishane. Look at this shoddy work. Look at this. The front's all scratched up. Come on, Nishane. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could tell that's Sultan Vetiver, even from the cap, without it ever being sprayed. That Those amber woods are so powerful. But, man, I love this vetiver because it has, like, four types of vetiver in it. And, um, it, you know, I, I, I really feel like after this haul, unless there's little quirky things here and there, uh, like that Queer de Lancome, I really feel like my buying should probably come to a stop. Top notes of, there's the note listing, Vetiver Java Absinthe. Sheenus Mo Sheenus Mole? Never heard of that. What is Sheenus Mole? Um my Texas accent probably is making French people's ears bleed. Uh is Sheenus Mole pink pepper? I have no clue. Bergamot, Vetiver Bourbon, Haitian Vetiver, Neroli, Tonka Bean. Amber wood, leather, and Brazilian vetiver. That's a lot of vetivers, man. That is a lot of vetivers. So, um, Sultan Vetiver, welcome to the United States, my friend. You are in a good home with a ram. Uh, you're going to live in your box. Nishane's boxes are nice enough where you can live in your box. Kinski, you're going to live out in the world. You're going to be with your brethren. Um, but Nishane, you can live in your box, and I'll put you with the other Nishanes. You can go live with your people, uh, under armed guard. Okay, next. Oh, baby, the hits keep on coming. Okay, so, let me get out my bottle first. Oh, no, it's under lock and key. Oh, I'll have to show you guys one day. But, um, I will show you the bottom of this bottle where it's all written and show you the reason that I wanted this so bad. So this is one of my favorite Italian leather fragrances of all time. Maybe my favorite. It would give Fendi Womo a run, a run for its money. It is the great Trussardi Womo from 1983. And this is an old tester. And look at the bottom. The bottom is Scannon. Scannon. So mine is not Scannon. Mine is Selective Beauty. Um, I believe it is a Selective Beauty. So I think it is two completely different scents. Um, well, I take that back. Not two completely different scents, but two different distributors. So I'm curious to do a comparison video one day. That would be real niche nerd fraghead content for you guys. Who would do a comparison between a discontinued fragrance that very few people talk about? I love it, though. Uh, it's got that grandma's spice kitchen open opening. You know, it smells a bit like uh, Fendi, Womo. Um, and, but it dries down to this honeyed, leather, mossy, you know, resinous. Oh, it's, it's a Beatrice Piquet who she also made... Beatrice Piquet also did the very famous uh, L'Instant de Guerlain and L'Instant de Guerlain Eau Extreme. So she, to me, she's a superstar. She created two of my favorite fragrances of all time. Those two are all-time Ramsey. I'll wear those until the day that I die. Uh, and I, now I have enough juice to wear them until the day that I die. I think this is full. I don't think Rich wore very much of this. Oh, Mmm. All right, fortifying the scent armory. Let's continue fortifying the scent armory. Oh, baby. Yes. Yes, come to Papa. So this also has a story, okay? The story is this. 
Um, and unfortunately, there's only one cent left after this, sadly enough. But this has an amazing story as well. And the story is that when I introduced Rich Mitch to Mudasir, okay, uh, Mudasir had a lot more stuff on there. And I went in and picked out some of the stuff I really wanted, some of the prized possessions. And Rich went in and picked out some of the prized possessions. And there was one that I almost added to my haul. And then I said, no, I'll wait. It'll, it'll pop up again later or something. And when Rich went through and started scurrying through Mudasir's list and was like, holy crap, look at all the stuff this guy has. This is one of the ones he grabbed. And I went, damn it, man, I should have bought it. Um, but it has come home. Uh, it went to England from Houston because Mudasir lives in Houston. It is now back in Texas. So this has made the round trip. From Texas to England to Texas. And uh, this is the great Balenciaga Portos, the original. Um, oh man, this was in the Castorium video yesterday. Oh god. Oh. And this is an eau de cologne. Um, Portos is an eau de cologne. Uh, and it is. If you've ever listened to the great Al Manzano talk about Portitos, I actually did an interview with Al Manzano. You can go check it out. But uh, Portitos is an eau de cologne, and um, uh, it's spicy, it's leathery, it's dirty because it has that castorium in it. And so here, let me show you my bottle. Let me show you my baby bottle. So here she is. Here's my baby bottle, and here's the big boy. The big boy. Um, just doesn't say Eau de Cologne on the front, though, I noticed. But uh, I don't know if they did an aftershave. Yeah, they did. They did do an aftershave, but it said aftershave on the front, too. So whatever writing was on the front must have rubbed off, but um, I don't think there's a way to tell otherwise either way the you know it's probably the eau de cologne because i think that's what uh Mudasir marketed it as you know but um it is very very good uh all-time great manly scent i mean if you like uh this you need to check out etienne eigner silver okay but portitos is um I will be decanting and wearing the piss out of this. Let's put it that way. And we only have one left. And yet, the one that's left is also an all-time great. Okay? And it's a backup. And it's actually uh, my third bottle of this now that I have. But I love this stuff so much that three bottles is... It's, wor it's worth having three bottles in the Ram uh, Scent Armory. Uh, and it is the great YSL Jazz, the original, with the keyboard bottle. Uh, and so I've got a 50 mil, and I have a 100 mil, uh, and now I have another 100 mil. And I think the juice is like very close to the top. So I am beyond stoked. I mean, this is, for me, this is all time great you know, Amber Fougere, whatever you want to name this category of fragrance. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, it is, it's got that anise that Heritage doesn't have. Um, but it dries down to this amazing oak mossy, you know, geranium, sandalwoody. I love wearing this stuff in the late summer. So like when I wore this as my scent of the day, um, it was like a month or two ago when it was late summer. It was a little bit warmer. Uh, it just works so beautifully. And it's so masculine. And I never get bored of this DNA. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Maybe I'm the only one that beats the drum like this. But this, uh, Heritage by Guerlain. Escada Porom by Escada. Uh, and a couple other things from the 80s, you know. They all kind of remind me, uh, 80s, early 90s, they all kind of remind me of each other. Um, and I love that DNA. There was something about, you know, uh, I would say maybe uh, Polo, excuse me, 
Um, Safari, Ralph Lauren Safari for men is another one. Vintage, Cosmere. They all kind of remind me of each other, and I love them. I love wearing all of them. Um, but, yes, I mean, these older bottles are becoming so hard to find. Uh, these Parfum, Parfum Corp bottles that I just, I had to. I had to. I just couldn't say no. So, the haul comes home. YSL Jazz. Balenciaga Portitos. Trussardi Uomo in the Scanon version. Shalimar Eau de Toilette in the Coke bottle. Oh, God. I'm going to have to wear this to bed tonight, man. This Shalimar is calling my name right now. Um, vintage Root de Vetiver, which this is like... It smells so minty. I need to spray this. Um, and, of course... Kinski, and not to mention, can't leave out Nishane's Sultan Vetiver. So the haul comes home, uh, and let me smell Sultan uh, uh, Kinski again. Fuck, I love that. I absolutely love it. There is some. The castorium in here is magnificent. You know what? I'm gonna wear this on skin very soon, but off of just smelling this. I can tell you this is one of Giza Schoen's best fragrances I've ever smelled from him. For me, personally, ever. Um, you know, he did stuff that I like. He has many fragrances that I like. Like, for example, he did Ormond Jane. It's a like. Uh, probably my favorite from him, the one that's a love, is Clive Christian X for men. I really, really like that fragrance. But this, this is Giza Schoen on another level. I've never smelled him do perfume like this before. Most of his stuff is like eminently wearable, you know. Um, he has his own distinct style, kind of like Francis Kirkjohn has his own distinct style. And um, yes, this is, I am stunned by Kinski. And Chris from Scentland strikes again, man. Anything that guy says on vintages, okay, I know he likes some stuff that's like modern and like, he likes some of those, like, $18 cheapies, like, from weird houses that not many people wear nowadays. And I, I, I usually take a pass when Chris from Scentland talks about, like, a modern perfume. But when he talks about a vintage, my ears perk up, and I, I listen closely. Um, I listen very intently to what he says about vintages. This Kinski is... I mean, from paper, it is... Um, for a castorium lover, I mean, I, I just basically showed you, I think, two of the best castorium fragrances. Uh, and then I did that list yesterday with 45 castorium fragrances. Obviously, Antaeus is at the top of the list. But even Eugene's fragrance that you can just go buy right now, 100 mils for 250 bucks or whatever it is, steel. Castorium absolute in the base. Um... You know, uh, it's it's so wearable, though. It's got the resins. You know, there's so many amazing castorium fragrances, but I was not expecting an amazing castorium fragrance from Kinski. So, um, there we go. That's the, that's the unboxing. The long-lost unboxing that is finally home. And not to mention, of course, the Queer de Lancome, which came from somewhere else, but that's another one I'm very excited to wear. A lot of exciting things happening at Channel Rim. Uh, so I appreciate everyone watching. Uh, let me know which ones you're most excited to hear about. I'm most excited to wear that Kinski because it's new for me. And this blew me away on paper. Oh, it's so good. Oh, man. But I love Castorium. I'm a sucker. I'll admit it. You know, if you don't like Animalics, I'm going to tell you you probably won't like this. Oh, God. Um, yes. Let me know which ones you're most interested in hearing about. Thank you, Rich, for being patient. Thank you to the hidden... Uh, masked mule who traveled across the ocean with my fragrances and got them to me. Uh, I did try to return the favor by sending something back to him, but I know it's not enough. So honestly, thank you, mate. Uh, you are an absolute lifesaver and uh, you are very much loved and appreciated at, at Ram Duck Productions. So thanks, guys. Appreciate everyone who likes, subscribes, comments, all that good stuff. And we'll have another video either tonight or tomorrow. Cheers, guys.